Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I'm sure a lot of you saw this thing. So this is the high voltage transistor, capacitor tester. And I know a lot of you guys have bought these, so thank you very much. I'll also put the link in this video as well. I want to show you a little bit more about this. And also, let's tear this down. Let's have a look what's inside it as well. So the reason I want to show you a little bit more about this is what was happening while I was testing capacitors with it. And also whether or not this will damage things like MOSFETs and transistors. So I have here a bipolar transistor marked MPSA42. So this is a high voltage transistor, but it's not a power transistor. We find these a lot in audio amplifiers, high powered ones, often in the protect circuit where they're subjected to high voltages but not a lot of current. So we can see on the data sheet for the MPSA42 it has a 300 volt collector emitter voltage so that's the highest voltage you can put between the collector emitter when the transistor is switched off before it breaks down. What happens then is the junction goes into breakdown. I can show this better on a piece of paper. So if we draw a basic graph, very basic, this is volts and this is current and I'll put I because I can't be bothered to write current and this is zero, okay. And then as we increase the voltage from zero, the current flowing from the collector to emitter, I, C, E, okay is zero, is zero because the base has got no voltage on so the transistor is switched off, it's switched off and 100 volts it's switched off and 200 volts it's switched off and then this transistor at 300 volts or something above that will break down and what happens is there effectively it goes into like an avalanche mode where the current just shoots up okay and that would normally destroy the transistor. The reason this tester doesn't do that is because it's a, this sounds like an enigma, a variable constant current source. So how can a constant current be variable? Well, what it really means is we can set the current here and whatever we set it to, that is the maximum current that will flow, okay? And I'm just going to prove that as far as you can see, this doesn't do any harm to the transistor when we test the breakdown voltage. So we'll start with the current at 0 0.01 milliamps. That's the lowest. I'll start with the voltage at the lowest as well. I'll switch it on, hit test. And we can see we have 8.7 volts between the collector, which is the red, and the emitter, which is black. This is an NPN transistor, so the collector is positive with respect to the emitter. And I can turn the voltage up here, Luke. And at some point it reaches 389 volts and it won't go any more. I can set it to less, but once it reaches that 392, it varies a little bit. It won't go any more, okay? And once it won't go any more, it doesn't matter what I do with the voltage. It won't go any more. And the reason it won't go any more is because the current won't go any more. Okay, now I'm going to turn this up to 5 milliamps and just show you what happens. So, it goes a little bit higher now. And it's dropping. Okay, so, again, low current. Turn this up. 387, it won't conduct anymore. So, it seemed quite capable of withstanding that. 5 milliamps. I don't believe this tester continually can produce 5 milliamps high voltages. Just thinking about this, if we take a voltage of say 400 and we try to work out the wattage this is dissipating in the transistor, which is voltage times current, which is let's say 400 times current is in amps. So 5 milliamps is 0 0.005 amps, okay, and we do a little bit of maths, and we have 400 times 0 0.005, about 2 watts, okay, 
And I don't think this can actually supply that amount of current, basically. That's why I think the voltage drops down, not because the transistors are failing, but because it just can't provide the current anymore. This. And if it produces less current, the voltage is going to drop. It's a constant current source. So the voltage across the transistor will depend on the current. See? At two and a half milliamps, it's quite happy. Half a milliamp. So this isn't destroying the small high voltage transistor. And we'll just stick it on the transistor tester now and just prove that. I think it's quite safe, but approach this as you will. You could just turn the voltage up until it stops increasing, and that is the breakdown voltage. Now, the specification for this one is 300 volts, and we're getting about 380 or something. Remember that 300 is the minimum breakdown voltage. You may find another transistor which is a bit less, a bit more, so the fact it's handling 380, I don't think is unusual. Talk about it down there, okay? Let's just check this transistor. Then I want to talk about capacitors. It says it's good. Gain is 150. Voltage base emitter 0.792, okay? So if you watch the previous video, you know I had a box full of 1kV capacitors. And these appeared to be fake, but I was actually wrong. I'm going to show you why that is not the case and why they appeared to be fake. So if we take the tester, we'll turn the voltage down and I'll leave the current on the minimum. I think these are some of the ones I tested previously, but we will soon find out because switch on, start, it reads 8.9. And that'll go to about 320. Yeah, watch as I turn it up. 427. And then it goes lower, okay? So, it's climbing upwards. It's about 420. Then it just drops. So, it doesn't stay the same like those transistors were doing when they were in breakdown, okay? Here's another one. Same thing. So, we'll just test turn the voltage up and this one won't go above 54 okay so these are ones that i've tested previously just try another one let's see what this one does so again test 17 okay so these are as i said fake or i thought they were fake I have one more of these, so we'll just try it. Okay. Once again, test. Now this one, you'll see, as I turn it up, this is increasing the voltage, and I keep increasing, so I'm on 500. This obviously scale isn't that accurate, obviously. So this one's gone over a thousand, so that will withstand a thousand. But notice now that as I keep turning this up, it doesn't go into like breakdown like the transistor does. It keeps increasing. And what will happen is at some point, at 2000, this capacitor's going to fail. There, it's failed, you see. It's gone to 237. Once I've done that, it won't work anymore. Yeah, you see, it'll just fail. So what's happening here is the capacitor isn't in breakdown. They don't behave in the same way as a transistor. So you can just increase, increase, increase the voltage until you effectively get it to arc over inside. So it blows a hole in the dielectric, the insulating layer, and then it fails and that is destroyed, okay? So that behaves differently. I can prove this once more. So we'll take one. We'll go eeny, meeny, miny. I don't know, I'll close my eyes. Let me see the shot. Where am I? I'll pick one at random, yeah. So I have one at random. We'll stick it on the test and we'll set it to the lowest voltage. And we'll test it, okay? So we'll increase the voltage. 
This one is going up. And we're now over a thousand, so we know that capacity will withstand a thousand. I'll go a little bit more, 1100, so I'm 10% over. But it's fine if I turn it back down again, turn it back up again. It will withstand a thousand. So we know in actual fact these are not fake. It was just me testing them wrongly. I was destroying them, okay? So you can see there that in actual fact is absolutely fine. And I'm sure if we took some more out of here at random, they would be fine. So yes, you can use this to test the breakdown voltage of capacitors, but if you keep increasing, it will be destructive. With the transistors, well, it goes into breakdown. You can't actually keep on increasing like you can with the capacitor. So I hope you found that useful and it makes this tool even more usable than it was previously. Now, I know a lot of you guys were interested in seeing what was inside this. I don't normally do teardown videos, but let's have a look. You may have noticed, I'm not sure if it comes out on the speaker as well, that this makes like a, a high-pitched whistling noise, especially if you go to high voltage and high current. So I'd say this is fairly simple in respect. It's a high-frequency oscillator driving a step-up transformer. Probably the sort of transformer you would find, if we still have them, like the old uh, Xenon uh, strobe tube lots yeah that would have about 4000 volt trigger something like that so i think it's something like that it could easily be the type of transformer we would find in the ccfl wise in a laptop and tvs obviously we don't have those anymore but i bet there's a lot of those transformers lying around so it's probably going to be used something like that okay let's have a look i'm also sure we're going to find that this has high voltage rectifier diode or some diodes in series high voltage capacity because i'm pretty sure this is feeding dc it makes sense to me otherwise i don't think it would work it certainly wouldn't work on the transistor so it's got to be a dc supply let's just see if we can get inside this another possibility this has a transformer driving a voltage double or voltage triplet type circuit as we had in crt tvs that's another possible i'm not sure if i need to take these off but i will if they will come i'm sure they will come off okay right let's see well it has a plug holding the top and bottom half together so we just have to take that off okay there we have it so this is a voltmeter display like the type of things you can buy off aliexpress that sort of thing okay little voltmeter the chip appears to be having had the numbers removed by the looks of it's all painted over but little voltmeter so the lithium cell must be underneath here there's a couple of screws in here it's got to be down there really not a lot of space but can't see it on the top and there's obviously a lithium cell in this this is going to be the transformer i would say although i did somewhat expect that to be more over towards this end we have a mosfet here what do we have 2SD1804, that's right by the coil. This is the, the test button, the start button. I won't press that. It is switched off actually at the moment, so it won't just come on, but I'm not going to press it. Obviously, this is the high voltage side. Look, there's a big gap in the PCB there. FQD2N10C. Oh, no, 2M100. Yeah, this is a 1000 volt MOSFET, okay. And this here, which looks kind of like a ladder, D8, D9, D10, T11, T12, D13, and so on. That could just be a high voltage rectifier. I suspect it's probably a, not voltage doubler, but something like that with more steps. 
which means there would be some capacitors the other side of here. Voltage multiplier, I think this might be. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, there's the lithium cell. So there's no capacitors that I can see. Yeah, there's no capacitors. I wonder if I can see like a, a load of capacitors under there. I don't. So this one's looking like it's just effectively making a high voltage rectifier diode by putting the number of diodes in series. Okay. Couple of chips on here. LM324, quad op amp. And this one. Four oh five six C sounds like a CMOS chip, but I'm sure it isn't. Yeah, I'm not finding anything for that. Well, it has a little logo which I think says TX or YX. I think it is YX four oh five six C. No, nope, nothing for that. Okay, but I think it's fair to say we have some sort of oscillator circuit driving this coil at high frequency lots of rectifier diodes and that guys is what we have inside it you would think there was some sort of capacitor or capacitance on the end of this ladder of diodes i don't actually see it okay it's fairly evident that all the high voltage on this part of it Okay, guys, so if you wondered what was inside it, well, now you know. I'm sure a lot of you are things to say about it down there. Okay, so we know a little bit more about the tester now. Hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't bought one of these yet, consider it because it's an excellent little bit of kit. And I look forward to seeing you all soon again on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.